Hi there boys and girls. Uh, today I'm just going to show you something uh, very important for winter survival. So many of you, including myself, I carry a pot like this. Um, it's about uh, 750 milliliters at the top. Um, but during the winter you need to uh, rethink that and pack a bigger kettle or you will have some issues so in the winter I use another one it's a coffee pot in addition and some bigger kettles than this this cup is one and a half liter Try not to get the yellow snow. Tastes like, tastes a bit funny. Okay, so I got uh, three yellows in a bag. So that's about uh, uh, the same as a, a gallon of snow. So this is nine liter of snow, or, or about two, ga two gallons. So just for the simplicity of the experiment, we're gonna do it the easy way. It's a five liter pot, and I gotta need some coffee. Be right back. Ah, oh, nice. Let's start. Now the first bag with uh, four and a half liters of snow or about uh, one gallon it ends up with one liter of melted snow or water let's put in the other one melting all the snow in a small kettle on the fire and by experience I would say it would take at least an hour of uh, continuous work on melting the snow because you have to fiddle with the fire all the time you have to um, put more snow in pour it out put new in and just to fill up uh, fill up some canteens so it's uh, time consuming and it kind of yeah puts you in the state just of melting snow and you can't do anything else as we now can see out of nine liters of snow uh, there was a little bit top on this uh, pot so it's almost 10 liters snow we got and just below two and a half liters and that tells us that this is this snow we collected was about roughly 25% water and 75% air so it's not much water and this snow was not only on the top layer it was a little further down so it wasn't just new fluffy snow it was a little bit compact snow too so normally new snow blue snow on the top this we say about um 90 percent 90 percent air 10 percent water we assume now this is going to boil and we're going to lose some liquid as vapor so all of it start to vapor a little bit so we will not end up with two and a half liters of water we will end up closer to two liters so you also have to consider that, especially when outside, cold weather, and a lot of it will vapor 
reaper out. So um, in the field, if you have a lid, perfect. If not, uh, it's what it is. Um, what should you use to uh, to store this water? You can put it in your canteen. If you have an algae cup, it will um, withstand the heat, and but it will quickly get cold and eventually freeze to ice. I had woken up with my few canteen beside my head and it was solid frozen block of ice. So you need to take care of it some way. That's why you need a thermos. Because in the winter you want warm liquid inside, not cold. And another, another thing with thermoses, uh, modern thermoses, almost everyone is made of steel, steel inside, steel outside. And when, it, when it's minus 20 degrees Celsius, you are a little moist on your hands, taking up the gloves, picking up the thermos, and it will stick. Metal. And, and warm. Uh, moist skin, not good. Anyone tried licking on metal during winter as a kid? I have. And it's not good. So what you can do, this is just some camo wrap tape, but any textile grip tape will help. So what do you I put this on the thermos, wrap it, it will help my hands from not sticking and it's very cold. This is a reusable um, camouflage fabric so it's okay to take it off again towards the summer. Like so. Now I have interest my thermos. Another thing with thermoses, I often have this uh, lid as a cup. Make sure you got uh, one with plastic rim, like this. Some have just a little bit of plastic rim, and you may experience that it stick to your lip because you're touching the metal. So this is quite good. Wide, wide enough. So, that's a good one. Well, that's a good rolling boil. Uh, and the snow, gener in general, if you pick the clean snow, it's, uh, it's not needed to boil. But for winter conditions, we want us to uh, bring with us as warm a drink as possible. Well, indoors it's uh, simple and easy to melt snow. And if you have a cooking pot, it's not that hard outside either. But what if you don't have any cooking pot? What if you don't have anything to boil water in or melt? What can you then do? Let me show you a couple of things. Another way of doing this is to use a sock, a mosquito net or something else. But most of you don't carry a mosquito net in the winter, <laughs> really, especially not in the snow. So let's use a sock and it will give you a little personal flavor too. So let's cramp this with snow. Especially in survival, we don't want to sacrifice any clothing at all. So by destroying your clothing to make something, it's uh, it's not a good idea. This will not destroy it if we if we're careful. It will only 
help us melt. And it's a wool sock, so we will cope with the heat a little bit better. So these two methods are a way to melt snow into water and collect it without, uh, without a kettle or anything to boil it. And if you compare it with, uh, with the snow melting demonstration I did earlier with the big uh, pot in the kitchen, you understand that this will take a long time and you will only get a little bit of water and it will be cold. Another method to uh, melt some snow without uh, fire is to fill a plastic bag, Ziploc bag or something else or just a bottle something that's waterproof During hiking, your body are producing a lot of heat. You can put it inside. If you have an inner pocket or anything, put it inside. Not towards the skin, but between the inner layer and the, and the others. This will eventually melt the snow during the day. But, one important thing, not on your skin, not when you're relaxing, or especially not when you're sleeping. This will draw the heat out of you, but when you're moving, hiking or skiing, you're producing a lot of heat and this will help you for not overheating and at the same time it will melt some snow. But if you feel you're getting too cold, don't do it. Take it out. This is an easy way to do it. But a plastic bag like this can rupture. And what happens if you rupture after you have melted almost all of this? You get ice cold water straight through your inner layer on your skin. It's not good. A Ziploc bag or one of these uh, waterproof packing bags where you roll up the top can be good. Or just a bottle. A bottle is very simple and you can put it under your arms. You can move it around on your body. But it won't produce much heat though, uh, much water I mean. Uh, a half liter bottle, okay. If you get 25% you're lucky. So, but there is something, there is some water. So it will help you, okay. So I hope this uh, little experiment or demonstration showed you how much snow you really have to melt. For this cup, if I filled it rim full of snow and melted everything, I would have about this, a small cup of water. Then I had to add more and more and more snow until I get a decent amount. And that will take a long time, especially on a campfire. Or uh, even worse, if you're using a stove, uh, alcohol stove or gas stove or, uh, or other fuels, you have to burn a lot of fuel just to melt snow. So, and you saw that amount of snow we melted and how much water we got out of it. These two liters we melted, it's just half of what you need during a winter day with not too much activity. If you have higher activity, you need even more. You need as much water in the winter as in the summer, if not more. And another thing, um, you won't feel that you are dehydrated that easy in the winter as you do in the summer. In the summer you have all these signs, you feel um, sweaty, you feel um, uh, dizziness after, uh, after some time, you feel thirsty. In the winter you don't have these signs as obvious as in the summer. So it's important to drink all the time. And most of all warm liquid warm water 
just as clean water, tea, coffee, anything. It's warm, you need to heat your core. So that's why it's imp so important to have much warm water storage as possible. So, thank you for watching and see you soon.